Oliva Tambo ba Bisandlasa. Oliva Tambo ba Bisandlasa. Oliva Tambo ba Bisandlasa. Oliva Tambo ba Bisandlasa. Bambo ngasi yegeli ba Bisandlasa. Oliva Tambo ba Bisandlasa. Oliva Tambo ba Bisandla sam, Oliver Tambo ba, Bisandla sam. Hey, Panyazele Sufi, today is the man of the moment. Huh? He has just Panyazad, the Democratic Alliance, announced his provincial cabinet without Solim Simanga, without any DA representation. After the DA was making all kinds of threats, they were tech. Teka, teka, te, eh, eh, TA was doing things yesterday. Anyway, why is Panyaza Lesufi the man of the moment? There is a perception that he has defeated Madam Helen, that in the way that he has strategized this particular provincial situation, he has bested the Democratic Alliance. So that creates the perception that he has done something that has not necessarily been done in these coalition negotiations where it seemed as if Helen Zilla was basically dominating many things, calling people out, correcting people on TV. You saw how she was moving. Number two, there's a perception that he defeated the Democratic Alliance and actually kept them out of the province. That is something that is going to be very celebrated in the ANC ranks. And I'm giving you some of this content from an ANC perspective. Because there were many in the ANC who said we can never do a deal with the Democratic Alliance. They have called us the enemy. They have called us corrupt. They said cater deployment doesn't work. They have blamed us for crime. We can never do a deal with these people. Of course, a deal was done with the ANC. But, I mean with the DA. But for a large number of voters and residents of Gauteng who support the ANC, they're going to view this as something that they are going to be comfortable with, that Panyaza did not, did not drink from the poison chalice, so to speak. And number three, they're going to be happy that he challenged the lies of the Democratic Alliance. Remember yesterday there was a presentation give, given by the DA where they said, no, we were offered two seats, etc., etc. And then Panyaza actually today, earlier in a press conference, actually said, no, these people are lying. Here's the document. Here's what was said. And in so doing, I'm going to play that clip and then I'm going to go on to the next question, which is important. But I want you to remember that that, that next question is the purpose of this episode. So Panyaza plays the clip. And before I play the clip, you must watch his T-shirt. What he's wearing on his T-shirt. The T-shirt says, don't kill Chris Hani again. That came with a pregnant political message. That came as a token that Panyaza is trying to take the mantle of Chris Hani. He wants to be seen as a modern era Chris Hani. And that is a serious political mantle. So earlier today, this is what Panyaza had to say about the Democratic Alliance and their interpretation of the events that have unfolded in the last two weeks. But when you come back, the topic that we're going to be looking at mainly is this. Could Panyaza Lesufi be the next president of South Africa? But before we go there, here's Panyaza actually giving rebuttal of what the Democratic Alliance actually said yesterday. This document, the DA said, we are going to vote for the ANC on condition you agree to this document. And I want you to read this document because it is this document that led to where we are today. And the document says, the composition of the Gauteng Executive Council, the premier will come from the ANC, and the allocation of MECs is as follows. Seven MECs will be allocated to the ANC and other parties, and three MECs will be allocated to the DA. The composition of the legislature, the speaker will come from the ANC, the deputy speaker will come from the DA, the chair of chairs 
will come from the DA. The deputy chair of chairs will come from the ANC. Now, the principle of allocation of chairperson is based on an oversight model where when a party occupies an MEC position, the same party shall also shall not occupy the chair of the portfolio. This is the document the DA gave us, say they are requesting for three portfolio points. And that's what our SG say. We have offered to that. The snake is that we said we have started on this document. Let's continue. Because this is the document that led to the election of the Premier Speaker and Deputy Speaker. Let's go and elect the remaining votes. Then the DA came, said, came a day later and said that we draw in this document. Now we draw in this document and they want us to start afresh. So when they withdrew the document, we were already at advanced stage of consulting with other political parties. And when they came back later, maybe I've heard the story that we gave them one, we gave them two, we gave, when they came back later, we indicated that your withdrawal meant that we need to engage other political parties. We engaged all other political parties. We really believe we can reconfigure this to be the way it is. And that's where the dispute came. Right. Let's get into the, into the topic. You can see that the man was, was being confrontational. He was being bombastic. He was coming at them left, right, left, right. Panyaza. <laughs> they called him that because of how he used to play soccer, by the way. So could Panyaza Lesufi be the next president of South Africa. Point number one, he has accumulated a serious amount of administrative experience. As the MEC for education, he got a good reputation for the academic achievements of the Gauteng province. And he would often be one of the top performing president every, I mean, not president, uh, leaders, MECs, uh, who were being celebrated at the annual announcement of the metric results. Many people were happy with the performance in Gauteng as a province in terms of education. So running a complex operation such as a Department of Education, even if it's prov uh, provincial, will allow you to deal with sophisticated systems, right? So for many, he will be viewed as somebody who did a good job, but he will have accumulated experience there. Then, obviously, as Premier of Gauteng, also, he would have accumulated a lot of experience, a lot of public recognition, and at 55 years of age, age is still on his side. So if we're at 2024 right now, he will, he will be basically going into the next campaign, be 59 going on 60. And as we know, 60 can be really young. I mean, we've got an American president at 81. We've got a South African president at 72. We've, we've had a lot of older leaders around the world at this particular point. So even though 60 is old, it's not politically old. It's politically, I guess, middle-aged. But it really is old. And we should get to a point where we have younger people occupying these positions of power at a younger age. I think it's regrettable that we're now living in a world dominated by gerontocracy. But that's a story for another day. Story for today is that he has been able to accumulate a significant amount of administrative experience, which will stand in good stead for him if he's making an argument for him to be uh, the next president, right? So obviously you will have to prove that case to the ANC. And that victory over Madam Helen will be something that will be something that he can use. The momentum is now on his side. Obviously not by himself. Figuel and Balua was also at the event very supportive of Panyaza. I, I think that there may be a tension that emerges later between the two of them. But I think at this particular point, both of them will be able to come and say something around there. If you've noticed, Figuel has changed his tone in the last um, few weeks since the election result. He's trying to be more diplomatic, more presidential, more statesmanly, which is not his typical, <laughs> you know, Figuel can go wild. But that's a story for another day. Panyaza has the administrative experience. And number two, he has a lot of political track record within the ANC. He was the three-term Tembisa branch secretary. Then he became the deputy regional secretary of the Kailami region. Then he joined the provincial executive committee of the ANC in 2007. Then he became the provincial deputy in 2018. Then he became the provincial chairperson in 2022. That's a plethora 
of positions inside the ANC. And also that's a plethora of exposure, especially those secretary positions at a, at a, at a ground level. You begin to understand how ground dynamics work within your own political organization. So within his own organization, he has acquired gravitas, acumen, and experience, and credentials, which could be in good stead for him when he is contesting for that particular position. His politics has been of a populist nature, right? Which is why there is this thing called Le Sufism. Whenever there's been a racist incident at schools, Panyaza would be there. Whenever something happens, Panyaza would be there. Panyaza, Panyaza, Panyaza. You know, umuntu ya pambu punyu ganjengo Panyaza nje. You know, when something, somebody just arrives, they have panyaza on you. What I'm trying to say is panyaza has used all of these positions to play the populist politics game quite well. He has fought enemies which he chose strategically because they position and brand him in a way that is favorable to the large voter base within the ANC, but the broader voter base of South Africa. For instance, when he fought AfriForum about, you know, discrimination in schools, about language policies, all of those things, he, he, he was deliberately challenging racist incidents in schools because one, that is a real issue that affects learners. And secondly, that's also a thing that is consistent with this new Chris Honey uh, brand and ethos and ideological positioning. Banyaza has a lot of energy and is willing to play the game. He's ambitious, he's energetic, and he understands professional communications because that is his background. So he is able to get in front of cameras, stay in front of cameras, stay in the conversation in a way that many politicians are not able to, but also to be able to stay away from some of the mess. When the first level of disputes were happening, he wasn't the one speaking. It was about Tika Ngiza and all of these guys, right? And he then comes in at the last stage to then drop the bomb. And that's also comms, right? That's strategy. Now, his agenda from the announcement of his, um, pro uh, his, his provincial cabinet is going to be something that is going to help him. So let's listen to the announcement which was made today of that provincial cabinet. We'll come back, talk about how this agenda helps him on that journey to becoming the next president of South Africa. Let's listen. Today, we bring to you the new leadership and members of the Executive Council, assigned to steer the ship towards a better county. The team will from this week start their work consolidating the election manifestos of our different parties so that we can develop a shared vision for county, a shared vision of prosperity, a shared vision of service delivery, a shared vision to eliminate crime, corruption, and lawlessness. I have the honor to present the following men and women to be part of the Executive Council of the Seventh Administration in Gauteng. The, moderniza the modernization of government and the need to embrace innovation and technology will be the hallmark of this administration. It is within this context that we have assigned MEC Bonginkosi Lameni from the IFP to lead this modernization through the Department of EGAV, to steer the finances of our province and to accelerate economic growth of our province. We are appointing MEC Lebuham Maile to lead our treasury as well as the Department of Economic Development. Our skills development program and the desire to educate our children will be led by MEC Matume Chilwan. We are also adding a new responsibility to this portfolio of education by adding the Department of Sports, Arts, Culture and Recreation. Our e-health program to modernize our health facilities and promote good living lifestyles and to ensure that our hospitals meet the standard, if not better standards of private hospitals and to use technology and innovation not only to improve our hospitals, clinics, and our medical facilities, but to ensure that our hospitals are ready for the implementation of NHI. We want to be the first province to move with speed in the implementation of NHI. And I'm proud to announce MEC Noman Dungo Moraluhuko as the head of this department. Our roads and transport port portfolio will be led by MEC Kidiboni de Aletabela, who is assigned the major task to accelerate the speed train between Limpopo and Gauteng. She's also assigned the task of modernizing our roads and launching our infrastructure development program in our province using the necessary transport modes to connect strategic areas of our province. We are of the view that an area like Rastinbeck might be in northwest, but is growing towards Gauteng, and you must connect the transport mode. We are further convinced an area like Sosolbeck that might be in the free state, but it might grow towards Gauteng. 
We are also interested to harness the economic potential of Harry Smith, which is 300, which is uh, three hours to KZN, three hours to Free State, Bluefontein, and three hours to Gauteng. Take into consideration the new e-commerce and cargo business. We have the strong view that Harry Smith is a strategic area that must be linked with Gauteng through all forms of transport mode. And that is why this task is assigned to MEC Kitiboni, Dian Itlaben. But we want to improve our townships. We want to improve our informal settlements. We further want to improve our hostels. But we can't leave our central, central business district so dirty and so bad the way they are. It always pains us that Johannesburg CBD is no longer the Johannesburg CBD that we had. We want to enter into strategic partnership with the Johannesburg municipality and other municipalities that have strategic CBDs in their areas. Our CBDs can't survive through cash loans and cell phone repairs. We want these CBDs to be vibrant again and to be repositioned to be the centers of our economic activities and to present job opportunities to our people and ensure that they represent who we are as South Africans. And this mandate is given to MEC Tasnim Motara as the new head of human settlement in our province. Our agenda to protect the weak, the poor, and vulnerable members of our society will now be led from the office of the Premier. The fight against crime is going to the center of this government. We are migrating this responsibility to the office of the Premier so that we can lead and champion the fight against crime, corruption, and lawlessness. We can't surrender our province to criminals. We can't be scared of our own shadows and convert our own houses to be prisons because criminals are doing as they wish. We strongly believe the utilization of creative ways of technology, innovation, and the increase of personnel to fight crime in our province must be a priority. If there is one priority for the seventh administration and the government of Gauteng in the next five years, it's our relentless efforts to confront and fight crime head on. And that's why this responsibility has been brought to the office of the Premier. There's an urgent need for food security and fighting urban hunger and the establishment of a state farm so that we can be in a position to consolidate the work that we're doing in this sector. It gives me great pleasure to invite Ms. Vuiswa Ramokhopa from RISE Mzanzi to join the seventh administration as the MEC responsible for agriculture and rural development. There's an urgent need for us to improve our infrastructure, and there's also an urgent need for us to coordinate the work that we're doing with local government. Our view is very simple. If we can't get the necessary systems within local government, the infrastructure development and the new infrastructures that we want to introduce in our province will be meaningless. There will be delays in local government. There will further be delays at strategic areas where we need to introduce new infrastructure. So the MEC that will be responsible for infrastructure development and COCTA will be MEC Jacob Mamabole, so that this task can be attended to and be concluded. We also feel that there is an urgent need for us to protect the weak, the poor, and the vulnerable. That our relationship with non-government organizations is a very important relationship that unfortunately there were serious missteps. We need to rectify this. Our NGOs are doing work on behalf of government and they must be treated with respect. They are not doing us a favor. We also need to duplicate the work that they do and ensure that we run a seamless institution that does not give them headaches and troubles. It's within this context that I want to wholeheartedly apologize to this sector for the pain and the misery that they're going through. Taking a decision to appoint MEC Faith Mazubugo to be the MEC that will be responsible for social development so that she can, she can repair this relationship and provide shelter to the homeless and also provide support to those that are poor and vulnerable in our society. With the pending environmental challenges in unlocking economic opportunities and the reality of climate change, we felt that the Department of Environment must be a standalone department so that we can clean Gaudi. Our province is dirty. Our cities are dirty. And this can be left on an ad hoc basis. Where municipalities are failing to clean our communities, we want to take that responsibility as provincial government to clean our cities and to clean our communities. It's within this context that we have appointed MEC Sheila Mary Peters from the Patriotic Alliance to lead this important task of establishing this new department. We are quite convinced we'll be in a position to build a better Gauteng, we'll be in a position to be proud of a new Gauteng, a Gauteng that will fight crime, a Gauteng that will fight corruption, and a Gauteng that will fight lawlessness. We are here to serve, and we are here to ensure that Gauteng is competitive. To these new leaders, I want to wholeheartedly welcome you and congratulate you on your new responsibilities. Thank you so much. So there it is. There it is. The agenda of connecting other provinces to Gauteng, the agenda of cleaning up the CBDs, the agenda of fighting crime. This is the kind of rhetoric which will be very popular in places like Johannesburg, like Twane, where these issues are really dominant. There are some dark undercurrents to this conversation because some of it can go in a Dudula direction, right? But by and large, 
people are going to love everything that he spoke about. He got a good mix. He got Vuiso Ramukhopa from Rising Zanzi in a good position. People love Vuiso Ramukhopa. You must keep an eye on her because that lady is going places, boy. She's going places. She's going to rise <laughs> in Mzansi. <sighs> I'm sorry. Sometimes I make myself laugh. And we must laugh, guys. Life is short. Life is difficult. God gave us a sense of humor so that we can find ways to continue to survive in this very, very cruel concrete jungle that we live in now in this modern era. So we must laugh. So anyway, <laughs> right. So this is going to help him on his journey. And he's going to have four years of doing this. And it was interesting to me. I always worry about super presidencies. He's also created a bit of a super premiership here because he's put fighting crime under his own purview where he's going to be dealing with Amapanyaza and all of this directly. It's a bit concerning because, you know, you don't want people to have a private army. You don't want people to then be able to do funny things in positions of power. But in any event, this agenda is going to be very popular for uh, his, his uh, next stage of premiership. So he's definitely somebody who's going to be on the up and up for balance. We must talk about the scandals as well. Banyaza sometimes is accused of corruption and he's accused of being one of the people who are into looting and eating the money, right? There was a school, school fumigation scandal, which was about 400 and something million a few years ago, where people said, listen, um, money was used in a way that was irregular to fumigate schools that didn't need fumigation. And a lot of the companies that won those tenders uh, to fumigate the school. So the way the tender system was structured, it was that it was below a certain amount so it could get quickly approved. It was companies that didn't have any experience in sanitation, any experience in health and safety and had been registered during the pandemic and Jigichi, they were getting approved for to go and fumigate multiple schools to the tune of 400 and something million. So that was a big scandal um, that basically was associated with him. He obviously uh, denied responsibility or involvement in that. The other one is the cost of the Amapanyaza program in and of itself. Another 400 and something million was spent on Amapanyaza. If you recall, helicopters were bought, BMWs were bought, all kinds of things were bought. Very, very um, exorbitant costs to roll out this program. But many people who live in Gauteng say that they haven't felt the impact, the crime hasn't re been reduced. There hasn't been a visible impact. And also there was this controversy about whether or not they are even still going to have their jobs. So that's something that also um, exists in this uh, Panyaza ecosystem, these accusations of corruption and him not being necessarily, um, you know, an honest politician and being more in line with well, MK, EFF, which is what, if you look at Twitter, you look at the accounts like Gulam and them. You know, Gulam is a weird uh, Twitter account because on the one hand, Gulam supports President Ramaphosa, but on the other hand, very, very hostile to uh, Panyaza, very, very hostile to uh, uh, Gauteng ANC. So, so I don't know what faction uh, th th that person belongs to um, or group of people because it may very well be a group of people running that account. But that's a side story. So these, these, these um, accusations do exist. They do exist uh, around there. But going back to the question, could Panyaza Lesufi be the next president of South Africa? He's got a very strong chance. The ANC is in decline, right? They move from 57 to 40. And if they continue to decline, let's say they go to 35, they're going to need partners in order to be able to, to govern South Africa. But they've already seen a model in which they can do that now where they can maybe hook up with IFP, they can hook up with um, Patriotic Alliance, and I don't think DA will come to that party ever again, but maybe they'll hook up with uh, EFF, maybe they'll hook up as well with, um, you know, Rise Zansi, all of these new political players that are emerging on the scene. Uh, Patriotic Alliance is likely to grow. Gaten McKenzie is another interesting person that I'm going to do a, a separate episode about because as you can see, Gaten also, he's got the gift, boy. Gaten be making people laugh, uh, acknowledging his criminal background. And because 
Anything that t- can be said about Gaten has already been said. There's no political attack for him in the in the future. So he could actually be a version of Trump and he's ambitious. He's willing to do it and to do the work. And I think we're going to see a lot from him as well in the Ministry of Sports, Arts and Culture. So in any event, there may still very well be a path for Panyaza. The question really is going to be, is he going to be able to beat out the rivals who are ahead of him? Poma Shatile is ahead of him, you know, and then he's got other rivals who are eyeing that same spot, such as Figile and Balula. Right now, today, they're very friendly, right? But as things evolve, as you get closer to 2027, you're going to see the factions, you're going to see the disputes. And it's three years from now. It's not so far away. So we'll have to see. Could Panyaza Lesufi be the next president of South Africa? He's got a very strong chance to be. He's got a very strong chance. Are you ready for a Panyaza Lesufi presidency? Huh? Oliver Tambo ba bisandla sam. Oliver Tambo ba bisandla sam. Remember, subscribe to the channel. It helps YouTube know that you like the co- Oliver Ta- You like the content ba bisandla sam. The content of the dissection ba bisandla sam. Oliver Tambo ba. Be signed, uh, Sam. Subscribe. Till the next one.